If you are in medical school, you are bound to get a question on either your medical school exam, your shelf exams, or your USMLE exams about this dermatology topic. This is extremely high yield, and if you want to ensure that you never forget this topic and gain points on your exams, then watch this video until the end. And don't forget, if you like this content, please be sure to pop that like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. So examiners love to test you on topics that they think that you will easily confuse. And one such topic is Bolus pemphigoid and pemphigus vulgaris. So to make this as easy as possible to understand and easy to remember, I'm going to break it down into three main areas. The first one is clinical information. I will tell you all the high yields and common tested topics on these two diseases. Next, I'll provide you with an extremely high yield mnemonic so that you will never forget and always get your questions right. And I'll also provide you with some practice questions so you can test your knowledge. And those questions will have an NBME style or format. So let's focus on the comparisons between Bullus pemphigoid and Pemphigus vulgaris. So when comparing these two diseases, we can break it down into these categories. The first one is age clinical features, histology, and what we see on immunofluorescence. So for patients with bolus pemphigoid, they are usually older than 60 years old, while for pemphigus vulgaris, their age range is between 40 to 60 years old. So right now, I'm just providing you with an overview of the big differences between bolus pemphigoid and pemphigus vulgaris so that you can easily point out what the diagnosis is and what the answer is on exam day. So for the clinical features of bolus pemphigoid, they have pruritic tense bullet and there is no mucosal involvement mostly. While for pemphigus vulgaris, it is painful, they have flaccid bullae, and there is commonly mucosal involvement. On histology for bolus pemphigoid, you will see subepidermal cleavage, while in pemphigus vulgaris, you will see intraepidermal cleavage. Now let's take a closer look at immunofluorescence for bolus pemphigoid. So you will see linear IgG against hemidesmosomes along the basement membrane. While in pemphigus vulgaris, you will see net-like intercellular IgG against desmosomes. So this table right here has most of the high yield content that you need to know when differentiating between bolus pemphigoid and pemphigus vulgaris. This is extremely high yield dermatology for the USMLE and shelf exams. So it definitely can be a bit overwhelming seeing all of this information and it can be very easy to confuse them. But don't worry because I'm going to show you how you can never ever forget this again. Okay, so for bolus pemphigoid, the main things that you need to remember about this condition is the age. It's normally seen in older patients more than 60 years old. The bullae are tense and it is pruritic. On histology, it is subepidermal cleavage, linear IgG against hemidesmosomes along the basement membrane. So what is highlighted in red are the extremely high things you need to remember. But how can we remember this so that we don't get it confused? with pemphigus vulgaris. And this is all you need to know. So for a bolus pemphigoid, instead of saying bolus, we're going to say bull lost pemphigoid. Bull lost pemphigoid. And so you can easily remember all the high yields for a bolus pemphigoid with this statement. Prudence and Henry are lost. Prudence and Henry are lost. So wherever you are, just say this out loud with me. So instead of bolus pemphigoid, you're going to say B 
people lost Pempacoid. Prudence and Henry are lost. Prudence and Henry are lost. Okay, perfect. Now that you know that Prudence and Henry are lost, they're probably like, what does this even mean? How will this help me on exam day? But I'm going to show you exactly how you will not forget anything about the lost Pempicoid. Okay, so here is an image of Prudence and Henry. And as you can see, they're pretty confused. They look lost. So Prudence and Henry are lost. So Prudence, the pru helps us to remember that it is a pruritic condition. Pruritic, Prudence, pruritic. And Henry kind of sounds like Hemi. So Henry helps us to remember that the hemidesmosomes are affected. Remember, there is linear IgG against hemidesmosomes on immunofluorescence for blast pempigoid. And lost. What does that mean? Okay, so the L stands for linear. Like I just said, you have linear IgG against hemidesmosomes. The O stands for old. Remember that patients are usually 60 years and older. S stands for subepidermal. Because remember, on histology, you will see subepidermal cleavage. The T stands for tense bullae. Tense. To make this mnemonic even more effective, you can think of prudence as pru-tense. So the pru for pruritic and the dense for tense bullet. So let's say it again. Prudence and Henry are lost. Pru, pruritic, dense, tense. Henry sounds like hemi. The hemidesmosomes are affected. L, linear. O, old. S, subepidermal. And T, tense. So you can just pause the video right here and really try to remember what exactly everything stands for to say it all loud. Prudence and Henry are lost. Pru, pruritic, dense, tense. Henry sounds like hemi, hemidesmosomes. Linear, old, subepidermal, and tense. So now that you know that Prudence and Henry are lost, you can easily remember everything that I previously highlighted in red. So you can pause the video here and stop and go through what exactly it means. What does Prudence and Henry are lost mean? Like what does it stand for? And while you have the video paused, you can just take a moment and pour up that like button, hit the subscribe button, and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this so that you can easily score points on exam day. So now you're probably thinking, great, I know Bullus Pemphigus down pat. How will I remember Pemphigus vulgaris? Well, for Pemphigus vulgaris, you can kind of think of it as the opposite of it, right? So for Pemphigus vulgaris, these patients are usually younger or middle aged, being that they're between 40 to 60 years old. Their bullets are not tense. They are flaccid and painful. And they also have mucosal involvement. On histology, you will see intraepidermal cleavage and immunofluorescence will reveal net-like intercellular IgG against desmosomes. A big thing to remember with Pemphigus vulgaris that is commonly tested is that it commonly includes mucosal involvement. So, to remember all of this, like I said, just have to think about Pemphigus vulgaris as being the opposite. Once you know that Prudence and Henry are lost, you can easily find out which one would be the odd one out and be related to Pemphigus vulgaris. But if you're having any issues with that at all, all you have to do is focus on the vulgar in Pemphigus vulgaris. Because, you know, someone who is vulgar is someone who is quite brash and says hmm, very outlandish things, right? So focus on the vulgar because someone says vulgar things. When you're thinking of someone speaking, you're thinking of their mouth. And the mouth has what? Mucus, right? Or mucosa. So 
here is an image of the mucosal involvement in Pemphigus vulgaris. So remember, someone speaks or says vulgar things, the mouth has mucosa, and that is involved in Pemphigus vulgaris. And now you know these high yield dermatology mnemonics for Pemphigus vulgaris and for Bullus pemphigoid. And you know to focus on the vulgar in Pemphigus vulgaris and that Prudence and Henry are lost. Now we're going to test your knowledge with some NBME style questions. A 61 year old man presents with blisters on his trunk. The blisters have been present for two weeks. Physical exam reveals 0.6 to 2 cm tense bullae and excoriations on his trunk. What is the underlying cause of this patient's condition? A. Linear IgM against hemidesmosomes. B. Linear IgG against desmosomes. C. Linear IgG against hemidesmosomes. Or D. Net like intercellular IgG against desmosomes. If you want a moment to think about the answer, then pause it here. But I'm about to tell you the answer, which is option C linear IgG against hemidesmosomes. So if you focus on the key clinical features in this patient, you know that the diagnosis is bolus pemphigoid because the first clue is the patient's age. They are 61 years old and they have tense bullying as well as excoriations, which means that they were probably itching because it was pruritic. And remember, Prudence and Henry are lost. Pru, pruritic, dense, tense bullying. Henry sounds like hemi, hemidesmosome. Lost, L, linear, O, old. S. Subepidermal cleavage. T. Tense. So, bullous pemphigoid involves a linear IgG against hemidesmosomes. A is not the answer because IgG is involved, not IgM. B is not the answer because remember, Prudence and Henry. Henry sounds like hemi, hemidesmosomes. Bullus pemphigoid is related to hemidesmosomes, not desmosomes. D is not the answer because that is for pemphigus vulgaris. In pemphigus vulgaris, that's where you have the net-like intercellular IgG against desmosomes. Now let's move on to question 2. A 48-year-old man presents with blisters on his trunk. The blisters have been present for two weeks. He says he cannot eat because it is so painful. Physical exam reveals facet bullet on his trunk and buccal erosions. Autoantibodies directed against which of the following is responsible for the patient's condition? A. Hemidesmosomes B. Basement membrane Or C. Desmoglines 1 and 3 Again, if you want to take a moment and figure the answer yourself, then pause the video right here. But for everyone else, the answer is option C, desmoglines 1 and 3. So you first have to know what is the diagnosis in this patient. And they have pemphigus vulgaris because of the patient's age. They are 48. Remember, pemphigus vulgaris affects patients between 40 to 60. The patient cannot eat because it is painful. Remember that pemphigus vulgaris is painful. They have flaccid bullet and buccal erosions because there is mucosal involvement. Remember, for pemphigus vulgaris, we focus on vulgar because a person can say vulgar things. So when someone speaks, he speaks with their mouth, which has mucosa, right? So this mucosal involvement lets us know the answer or the diagnosis is pemphigus vulgaris. So then we have to know, hmm, what are autoantibodies directed against in this condition? Well, it is not option A because remember, Prudence and Henry are lost. Henry sounds like hemi, which is in bolus or bolost pemphigoid. So the answer is not option A. 
it is also not option B because that would lead to a completely different condition. The best answer here is option C, Desmoglanes 1 and 3. Because Desmoglanes are the most common type of desmosomes that are commonly affected in Pemphigus vulgaris. And to master even more extremely high yield concepts for your exams, then just click this video right here. And don't forget to power up that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you never miss another video like this. Thank you so much for watching.